Hey guys, welcome to another devotional. Today I'm going to be sharing a little bit from Matthew 24. Um, it's just something that we were talking about over breakfast a little bit. Something that uh, can be an encouragement to us, especially in light of the things that are going on right now. So starting in verse 3, it says, Later Jesus sat on the Mount of Olives. His disciples came to him privately and said, Tell us, when will all this happen? What sign will signal your return and the end of the world? Jesus told them, Don't let anyone mislead you, for many will come in my name, claiming I am the Messiah. They will deceive many, and you will hear of wars and threats of wars, but don't panic. Yes, these things must take place, but the end won't follow immediately. Nation will go to war against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in many parts of the world. But all this is only the first of the birth pains, with more to come. Then you will be arrested, persecuted, and killed. You will be hated all over the world because you are my followers. And many will turn away from me and betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and will deceive many people. Sin will be rampant everywhere, and the love of many will grow cold. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. And the good news about the kingdom will be preached throughout the whole world, so that all nations will hear it, and then the end will come. So the disciples had come to Jesus, and they wanted to know when he would come back, because they're obviously enjoying being in his presence. And they say to him, look, wh when are you going to come back? How are we going to know? What are the signs that are going to be happening? So they knew that his return would be different from his first appearing when he was with them at that time. So they knew, hey, right now he's coming and he's giving grace, but he's going to come and he is going to come to judge the world and to set things right. Jesus reminded his disciples as he speaks to us today, even through the scriptures, that there are going to be wars, there are going to be threats of wars, there are going to be famines, there are going to be earthquakes, persecution, deception, increasing sin, all these things that are part of a fallen world, all these things which are horrible for us to have to go through. But in verse 8, he gives us that glimmer of hope, the reminder that these things are birth pains. Birth isn't something that I can necessarily speak about from experience, especially as a guy, but I've been told that it is the most painful pain that you can possibly experience. But it is the one with the most wonderful result because at the end of it, you have a baby. So these pains aren't enjoyable. Likewise, the pains in the world aren't enjoyable for us to go through. They're horrible for us to have to experience, but they lead to the most wonderful result, which is Christ's return, when he's gonna come back for his bride, which is the church, which is us, and he's gonna set things straight, and uh, finally at the end. And those these are awful experiences, we can have joy in Christ in the midst of these things. Not saying that these things aren't horrible, but saying that in the midst of these things, we can cling to Christ because we can actually run to him rather than being hopeless in the midst of these tragedies. We can run to Christ and we can appeal to him, we can pray, and we can watch him intervene in these situations rather than us trying to just simply do it in our own strength. We can actually have our hope in him as we await his return. In John 16, verse 33, it says, These things I've spoken, that you may have peace in me. In the world you will have many tribulations, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. And that's why we can be of good cheer. That's why we can have joy, because Christ has already overcome the world. We know that he has conquered sin and death, and so we can wait on him for when he will come again and when he will set all things right. But until that day, Jesus tells us to continue in what he's already asked us to do, which is at the very end of the uh, uh, section that we read, which is the kingdom will be preached, where the good news is on our lips and in our lives that we can share that with other people, that we can show that to other people. So to encourage you guys tonight, I want to encourage you guys, and including myself, that in the midst of all these tragedies that we can see, we can look to Jesus. In the midst of all of these things that can lead us to anxiousness, instead, we can choose to lead ourselves to Christ, to wait on him, and to see 
how he will intervene, not just in the lives of those that we see around us, in the situations that we see, but also in our hearts, that we're then not just anxious, but we're actually waiting on him. Remembering that these things are birth pains of the blessed hope that is to come when he will come again. And remembering in all of that, that our main message from Christ hasn't changed, that we can still go out and we can proclaim the gospel to a world that needs it just as much now as it did 2,000 years ago when we came. So I want to encourage you guys with that tonight. God bless you.